Last week, I talked about the importance of Newton's three laws of motion, how they laid the groundwork for Newton being able to explain just about everything. But in order to explain everything off the Earth, uh, you know, the motions of planets around the sun, the behavior of comets, and everything, he had to apply one more rule, something he called universal gravitation. And when he cooked this up, it was hugely controversial. People did not like this concept of universal gravity. But first, I'll, I'll explain why, but first let me show you Newton's line of thinking to develop universal gravity. So we had our three laws of motion, right? We have uh, every object, uh, if it's in motion, prefers to stay in motion. If it's still, it prefers to stay still, this concept of inertia. We have force equals mass times acceleration, this conservation of momentum. And then we have every force is met with an equal and opposite force. Boom, Newton's laws. Say you're sitting under an apple tree, like Newton did. Say you watch an apple fall to the earth. Okay, let's think. The apple is accelerating because it's moving because it was not moving and now it is moving. That is an acceleration. Boom, it's moving. An acceleration means there must be a force. Uh -huh. The earth isn't just like vaguely pulling on the apple. It is applying a force to the apple to cause it to accelerate. Second law. Uh-huh, okay. Oh, but, but, um, uh, it's a moving, there's a force, let's call this force, I don't know, gravity. Let's just go with it, okay? The earth is applying a force of gravity to the apple. Okay, no big deal. But what about the third law? The third law says that every force is met with an equal and opposite force. If the earth is applying a gravitational force to the apple, then by Newton's third law, the apple is applying an equal and opposite gravitational force to the earth. But the earth isn't moving around a lot. That's okay. The forces are balanced, but the apple has a little bit of mass and the earth has quite a bit of mass. And so the acceleration of the earth is only going to be a tiny, tiny bit, while the acceleration of the apple is going to be a lot of it. Okay, so everything balances out. But if, if this means that the earth is applying a gravitational force to the apple and the apple is applying a gravitational force to the earth, that means gravity applies in both directions. That means gravity applies everywhere. Like every object is connected to every other object through the force of gravity, which means the earth is applying a gravitational force to the moon. Using this insight, Newton was able to calculate the orbital speed of the moon. Boom using his laws of motion in this concept of universal gravity. And then he went further. He was able to explain all of Kepler's laws, which Kepler's laws have been known for generations by then, but no one could explain them. Boom, Newton could explain them. He could explain the tides, which no one had been able to do before. He could explain the wobble of the sun back and forth as the planets swing around it in their orbits. He was able to explain the motion of the planets, motion of moons. He was able to explain the motion of comets. Uh, he was able to predict that the Earth is actually a little bit fatter around the middle because of the interaction with the moon. Uh, just everything. His work where he described this, the Principia Mathematica, is... You know, a little bit of here are my principles, here are my laws, here's universal gravity, and then a lot of, and then here's what I can now explain. Here's the power of this new way of thinking. Now, the reason Newton got a lot of pushback for this was that gravity required action at a distance. Like, <clears throat> excuse me, the earth isn't like connected to the moon. There's not like a string out there reaching to the moon. There's this invisible force of gravity that is somehow communicating between the earth and the moon and it's happening instantaneously. And, but there's like no, there's nothing visible. There's nothing we can see. There's this something we call action at a distance. Somehow the moon is able to feel the earth in the presence of the earth without any connection, without any wires. And that's weird. Newton actually got this concept of action at a distance from alchemy. That's right. You know that, that, that millennia old practice of transmuting elements into gold and the philosopher's stone and all that. Nowadays, we ridicule it because it's not science and they're way off track. 
in understanding how the universe works. But, you know, it was, it was a good effort. They didn't know any better. Newton was big into alchemy. Alchemy already had these kinds of lines of thinking, like action at a distance, and he was able to apply it to this concept of gravity. But then naturally got pushback. He's like, they're like, action at a distance, you know, these invisible forces, universal gravity. Newton, are you sure? He got pushed back on it, but eventually, like, it just won out because it was so good. Newton himself ended up defending it a little bit. He's like, look, I don't know what is causing gravity. I don't know how the moon is able to stay connected to the earth through this force. I'm not even going to guess. He said in a famous line, I feign no hypotheses. I'm not even going to bother trying to explain it. All I know is that it works and I'm awesome. And everyone's like, okay, good enough. (laughs) And that's universal gravity, a cornerstone of our understanding of the way the world works for over 300 years. Thanks, Isaac. And thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please consider contributing to patreon.com slash PM Sutter. It's how I keep this show going. And, uh, you know, like, share, subscribe, leave a comment, all the usual stuff. You know, I'm no big deal. We're all friends and we're all connected by invisible strings of gravity. See you next week.